welcome to each of you. I'm so pleased to be here in our sanctuary congregation, Beth Israel. My name is David Lyon. If we haven't met, I'm the senior rabbi of the congregation. And I'm very pleased to be here and to welcome you because Congregation Beth Israel is the oldest synagogue in the state of Texas. Organized in 1854, we have always stood for all the reasons that we're here today, for goodness, for humanity, for peace. I also want to share with you that this is the month on the Hebrew calendar called Adar. And the Hebrew month of Adar is known for joy. And this weekend, the Jewish people will celebrate a holiday called Purim. We'll read from the Hebrew book in the Hebrew Bible called Esther. And ironically, the book of Esther does not contain the name of God. And we ask the question, why not? But we also learn that in places and at times where God's presence is absent, we have to look to each other. We have to find in each other's faces and each other's eyes each other's hearts, God's presence. And when we do, we find there the good deeds, the hearts of wisdom, and the open hands that help us accomplish all that God has already commanded us and taught us to do and to be. And for that reason, we're here today, because a mensch is a good person, a person of humanity, who truly understands what it is that God has called us to do and to be. And therefore, it isn't only about seeking God's presence in our life, but demonstrating where God can be reflected in all that we wish to do. It's a great honor to welcome to our Bima, to our sanctuary, President and Mrs. Bush. I'm pleased to say I have been in your church many times it's a great honor to welcome you to our synagogue today. It's a great honor, too, to welcome my dearest friend from your church, Reverend Russell Levinson. And Russ, you and I share many times at your church for many interfaith moments, which are so critical to the binding of all peoples who truly stand for goodness. I want to welcome to our Beamer, Stephen Geiger, who chairs the Mensch Foundation and the reason that we're here. And also to recognize Dr. Rea Shemirkanye, Ambassador of Hungary to the United States, Philip Aronoff, Honorary Consul General of Hungary, and Mensch Foundation board members, Murray and John Chapo and Cesar Beltran. Many others are with us and the reasons that you're here is that you represent leadership in our Houston community, Christian, Jewish, Muslim, and in all the ways that all of us try to strive to be that mensch. But I'll tell you something about a mensch. It isn't a title that we grant ourselves. It's always a title that we give to others. And if we see the highest regard for humanity in another person, whether they are young or old, it's a great honor to be called a mensch. So we have a beautiful program here today to welcome President and Mrs. Bush, and in a moment to extend to them such a treat, a gift from our larger world community to raise them to such a status, such a level as a mensch. And now I'm very pleased to welcome, to share with us more about the Mensch Foundation, its founder, its operator, its guide, Mr. Stephen Geiger. Rabbi Lyon fortunately saved me from saying a lot of things. Thank you very much. I also would like to welcome Reverend Russell Levinson from the St. Martin's Episcopalian Church, Hungarian Ambassador Reka Semerkedi and her husband, and my board members, John Chapo and Cesar Beltran. And we have a special guest in the corner, another Hungarian gentleman, Al Marx was a Holocaust survivor. At age 13, him and his parents and his two young sisters were carted off to Auschwitz from Hungary. 
As soon as they arrived in Auschwitz, the selection began, and he saw his parents and his two younger sisters go up in smoke. He survived, he was 13 years old, he looked older, he was good enough to work, and they put him to work in Auschwitz, and he had, to went, had the pleasure of going on to other concentration camps, finally being liberated in Ebensee, Austria. And at age 17, he made his way somehow to New York, and they said, well, there's too many people in New York, why don't you go someplace where there's more space? So he ended up in Houston. Al Marx. <laughs> and his wife, Sarah Marx. I started this foundation in 2002 in Budapest, Hungary. I go back often to Hungary. I have relatives there. And I used to go back in the 70s when my mother's sister was still living there. And my wife, who I met there in 1991, her parents live today in Hungary. They're now 83 and 84 years old. And I live in Palm Springs, which gets very hot starting in April. So we go off to Hungary and to spend time with her parents. And in 2002 in Hungary, there was already an upsurge of anti-Semitism. And I thought there was the necessity to start a foundation that would teach young people not only about the Holocaust, because the Holocaust was a historical event, it was a horrible event for Jews. Two-thirds of European Jewry uh, were murdered. But to teach them to be tolerant, and more than even tolerant, to teach them to respect every human being for what they are, for their character, for what's in their heart, not for the color of their skin, not for the religion that they practice, but for the kind of human being they are. And they should learn that at a very early age. It's never too young to learn that. They can learn in a sandbox when they have to share something with the other kids. And I thought this was important to, to, to do it in the country of my birth, which we escaped from in 1956 with my parents because of the communist government there. And my father was also in a concentration camp in Mauthausen. He was liberated by the US Army. I still have the papers, the liberation papers, in May 5th of 1945. My father was basically down to 88 pounds, as tall as I, six feet tall, with skin and bones, flecked typhus. And uh, the last day, he had a watch that was hidden, and he exchanged it for some porridge, and that gave him another day to live. It was sewn into his pants. And this is how people survived, the ones that did survive. Once he, once he was liberated, he went off back to Hungary and went to back his, own, his home city of Dürer and found out that his parents were also gassed in Auschwitz, much like Al Marx. His two sisters were also gassed in Auschwitz, much like Al Marx. He goes back to Budapest, my mother was alive. She was pregnant when he was carted off by the Hungarian Arrow Cross on the death march towards Mauthausen. And she, my mother, was not taken because she was very pregnant. Somehow they felt sorry for her. Who knows what goes on in the mind of uh, crazy, evil people. But next day she aborted. So my father expected a child, perhaps, and there was no child, and that's why I was born. Anyway, the whole point is that we must take care of each other. And the word mensch is tailored to George Bush and to his wife, Barbara Bush. When they tailored mensch, it was tailored to them. And I'm very happy to have the opportunity to award them. You will find outside brochures on what we do. Uh, we are raising funds for Holocaust survivors in Hungary and also around the world in the uh, United States and as well as uh, Israel. Russell Levinson, Reverend Russell Levinson, before I end up talking throughout hours and hours, stop this Brooklyn Jewish guy. Please come up. Thank you. Mr. President, 
and Mrs. Bush. It's good to be with you again and with your wonderful son, his wife, Neil, and Maria. Uh, Stephen, good to make a new friend in you and to be once again with my good friend, uh, David Lyon, with whom I've worked several times for several good reasons, I think. Mr. President, some years ago, you were nice enough to ask me to give an invocation at the 20th anniversary of the liberation of Kuwait at your library in College Station. And that evening, I was sitting next to a young Muslim man. Uh, he was a boy at the time of the liberation. And he said to me, I give thanks every day for President Bush uh, for the reason that I am free. We're here today to give thanks to both of you in much the same way for the way in which you've led us and shown us uh, the goodness that can be in leadership. Uh, I want to say that one of the things that unites Muslims and Christians and Jews is that we all share uh, the patriarch Abraham. And uh, many of you will probably be surprised to know that the oldest Hebrew scripture uh, that we have is actually the words of a woman, not a man, not Abraham, not Moses, but a woman, Miriam. When uh, the Hebrews had passed through the Red Sea, got to the other side, and at Pharaoh's soldiers were vanquished in the Red Sea, uh, uh, Miriam took a tambourine and she sang, now, I will not sing, I'll spare you. Uh, she sang these words, Shiru la Yahweh ki ga'o ga'a sus waro kavo rama. Vayam. And loosely translated, it means, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed wondrously. Horse and rider, he's thrown into the sea. It was a thanksgiving to God for vanquishing dark things in the world. Uh, the Minch, and both of them that we come to give thanks for today, have done that again and again. Weather, uh, fighting for fair housing for people of every color and background and orientation, nationality, uh, whether fighting for the cause of literacy or simply showing us that you can lead and at the same time be a good and decent and gentle person. We give thanks for who you are. So I come on behalf of St. Martin's where uh, President and Mrs. Bush attend and worship week after week. If you're a Christian and you don't have a place to worship, well, we're at St. Martin's on Sundays. Uh, if you're a Jew and you don't have a place to worship, you ought to be here. Uh, uh, but thank you so much for your friendship, for your leadership, and for all you have done for our world, our nation, our state, and our city. Thank you for being who you are. My pleasure to introduce to you Cesar Beltram, who's with the Foundation. Cesar. Such an illustrious group of people. I flew in from Connecticut. It was zero degrees when I left. So this is quite a treat. I don't really want to talk about myself, even though I was asked to do so. I want to read a letter from your cousin, Bert, who was my boss in Budapest. A letter from George Herbert Walker III. He loves his name. I know because I used to carpool with him in the office. Honored invitees, distinguished guests, and most especially my relatives, my family, George and Barbara Bush. It gave me great pleasure to be asked to say a few words at this award ceremony. It has been my distinct pleasure to observe and work with the Mensch International Foundation since its inception in Budapest some 15 years ago. The Foundation's creation coincided with my own time in Hungary when I enjoyed the privilege of serving as a U.S. Ambassador to that great nation Thanks to your son for that great privilege. My very active Embassy Public Affairs Counselor and sometimes my acting Deputy Ambassador, Cesar Beltran, introduced me to the Foundation's founder, Stephen Geiger, and pointed out to me the need to support the activities and principles of the Mensch Foundation, activities and principles that George and Barbara have amply and energetically supported and for which they are receiving today's award. 
When it came to Budapest in September of 2003, I was unaware of the complexity of Hungary's World War II history, and particularly of most of its Jewish citizens who suffered terribly from the roundup and extermination at the end of the world conflict. If I could do anything to avert a repeat of such a horrific past, I meant to do so. If I could do anything to do so, and I know that I share these feelings with George and Barbara. The Mensch International Foundation's mission is a bold and simple one, to educate children and young adults about the horrors of the Holocaust, and to underline the ugliness and warn against bigotry, prejudice, and anti-Semitism. This letter was sent from St. Louis, by the way, and you know that they've been desecrating cemeteries in St. Louis, Jewish cemeteries. The Foundation has carried out this mission with summer study camps and study abroad programs, commemorative activities, and of course by giving out Mensch Awards. So let me congratulate and cheer George and Barbara on receiving recognition for being Mensches, the kind of people who would give you the shirts off their back to keep you from getting cold, or who would hold a cup of water to your lips when you are thirsty and parched. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have mentioned many reasons, President Bush and Barbara Bush, why you are being awarded today. I have a secret reason for awarding President Bush. That's because he hates broccoli. <laughs> and I hate broccoli. <laughs> My wife drives me crazy with broccoli. I would like to ask President Bush and Barbara Bush to please come up so I can present the award to you. President Bush, this award comes not only from the Mensch Foundation, but it comes from the bottom of my heart to you. And it was made in Hungary by a very, very good sculptor called Peter Botos. It reads, President George Bush, George H. W. Bush, you are a Mensch for all seasons. I'll, I'll give this to your son to hold. Barbara Bush, you are being awarded not only for being a mother of very fine three people. How many? Three. No, four, four, four. Five. Where are these other kids? I, I had no idea. When did, did, did you have no television at home? <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. My parents had a hard enough time with me as an only child. I can't understand how you could do all this. Congratulations, Mazel Tov. For George's legacy. Mazel Tov. Barbara Bush is a woman of moxie. And me being a Brooklynite after Hungary, there's nothing better than somebody who gives you the dirty look. 
Barbara Bush, please accept this. Also from the bottom of my heart and from the Mensch Foundation. If I may give you a kiss. Being an immigrant to the United States, I cannot become a president. But this is the closest that I can get. It's, thank you, thank you very much for coming today and accepting this award. And I'd like to introduce Neil, your son, who would like to say a few words on your behalf, I think. Well, Steve, thank you very much um, for this amazing honor. A Monday evening, pretty late actually in the evening, I got a phone call, kind of a strange number popped up, had no idea who it was. It was Steve who was calling. He just arrived from California. He and his wife, Julia, uh, drove in from California to be here today. He can't fly. I said, why didn't you fly? You know, that was the first thought. He can't fly for medical reasons. Um, it's a real tribute to his commitment to this great undertaking that he has driven all this way to participate and to bestow such a great honor on my parents. So Steve, thank you very much. Um, on behalf of mom and dad and Maria, I'd like to thank Rabbi Dave Lyon for welcoming us into this uh, place of worship. Uh, this, this place, the oldest congregation of its kind in Texas, as he pointed out, has done so much for the great city of Houston. Um, the leaders, the legacy leadership that has followed, that Dave has followed, and his leadership in this community, and many of the congregants have made this city a great city. So thank you for your warm hospitality and welcoming us today. Um, it's always great to be with our uh, very good friend, Russ Levinson. Um, he provides the most amazing pastoral care to my parents. Um, all Bush family members are grateful for that love and care and friendship. Um, and this, to see Dave and Russ and many faith leaders in our community lock arms to address um, a growing problem in America, and that is our divisiveness, to bring people of different faiths together to, to, to talk tolerance, has been really heartwarming for me personally. And I applaud both of you for your great work in this community. Um, and before I start, I'd like to shout out to Fred Zeidman, an old family friend who's he's worried he's going to be invited to join this congregation. He belongs to every other synagogue in the city. So <laughs> I think, Dave, you just asked him for some money. I'm sure he'll be glad to follow, <laughs> follow suit. But Fred, if it weren't for you, we wouldn't be here today. Um, as many of you have probably noticed, Mom and Dad decided some time ago that they finally retired from media interviews. Um, at that same time, they basically retire from s public speaking. So it, it says a lot about their gratitude for and their belief in the significance of today's events, that they not only wanted to be here, but that they asked me to say a few words on their behalf. Before that, however, I learned many years ago not to let a live, an open live microphone go unused. And so with your forbearance, uh, I would like to speak first as one of the proudest sons on the face of the earth. That starts with thanking the Minch International Foundation for honoring two people for whom service to others and selflessness and especially tolerance go hand in hand. The press release said the award was being presented to George and Barbara Bush because like any Minch, they are the kind of people who would give you the shirt off their back. If ever there was a statement that describe the essence of my parents, that would be it. They are always reaching out and helping others and thinking of ways to help make this a better world. They did that before they were in public life. My dad did that in college when he got involved with the United Negro Fund in 1948 while just a student at Yale. That was just four years after its founding and he and my Uncle John, his brother John, continued to be involved well into adulthood. 
My parents also started the Bright Star Foundation to help with leukemia research and treatment after my sister Robin died from leukemia at the age of four. They also gave back when dad helped start the YMCA out in Midland as a young businessman in the early 1950s. I could go on and on and on, but you get the idea. Helping others has always been a part of their DNA. And of course, all of you know uh, that they helped so many people in such admirable and lasting and profound ways as President and First Lady of the United States. And it's been that way for a quarter century since they left Washington behind as proud Houstonians. Earlier this week, for example, Mom and her Foundation for Family Literacy celebrated their 28th year of helping adults and children with low literacy start to break the intergenerational cycle of illiteracy, which is too often synonymous with, in, with dependence and struggling and hardship. It is truly awe-inspiring to think of just how many people have been touched and lifted throughout their remarkable lives. And not just because they've led a government with enormous resources. As this award attests, it was also because they have always been the kindest and gentlest, the most decent people around, the most accepting, the biggest, the most big-hearted, always the brightest points of light. So again, thank you, Steve, for honoring my parents in this special way. Now, for the reason why mom and dad really wanted me to speak on their behalf today. They, along with all decent people who have heard about the recent outbreak of threats against Jewish institutions uh, and hateful attacks against Jewish cemeteries, including more yesterday, understand that this is not a time for silence or ambivalence or indifference. They share the age-old view articulated by Edmund Burke that the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. My parents are here because we must speak out against this depravity in our midst and continue to condemn it in clear and simple ways. We have come too far. Too many have struggled for too long and sacrificed too much for us to go backwards as a society and to somehow turn back the hands of time. That's where my wife is supposed to applaud. <laughs> the point is increasingly being made that Houston is America's city of the future, a place where so many people of such diverse backgrounds are welcome, where hard work is rewarded, and where dreams can come true. Why else would so many people be coming here? And if you don't believe me, you haven't driven on the Katy Freeway or the 610 Loop in a rush hour. But others have made the point that demographically, Houston is what America will look like in 2030, a multicultural melting pot that draws on the diverse backgrounds of its citizens as a source of strength. As it is, Houston has so much going for it. Our race relations here are much better than in other parts of the country. We have an enviable rate of economic growth, a low, lower cost of living that make our region one of the best places in America to live, work, and raise a family. But here in Houston, we have something else that no other city has. We have George and Barbara Bush, who have shown us all what kindness and goodness and helping others are all about. One of the reasons we should be so confident about the future is that the example they have set gives us all a straight and sure path to a brighter future. Treat others with kindness. Put others before self. Try to leave this world a better place. So thank you again, Steve, for this very special award. Thank you, Rabbi Lyon, for welcoming us into this house of worship. My parents are more grateful than mere tongue can tell. And we wish you, Steve, all the best as you continue to spread your important message of tolerance and helping others. The entire Bush family applauds this incredible work, and we wish you and Julia Godspeed. Thank you all. Don't go away, don't go away. You want to kiss me? I'm, I'm just I, a message. I, I,
I like the fact that you also cry like me. <laughs> it's a strength, not a weakness. Thank, thank you, you, thank you, Neil. Thank you very much. As we get close to ending our program, thank you again, Neil. I am very lucky to be the citizen of three countries. One is, the, I was born in Hungary. I, I escaped, but I never gave up my citizenship, so I'm a citizen of Hungary. Came to the United States, America gave us refuge at a time when we needed refuge and I'm a citizen of the United States. I was educated here, and uh, I feel, if people ask me, who are you, Hungarian, or Israeli, or American, uh, to be honest, I have to say I'm an American Jew born in Hungary who owes allegiance to Israel as well. I used to live in Israel. I still have my Tudat which means your identity card. And I'd like to share an anecdote before we go to the musical program. When I lived in Israel, I started to become a journalist. And I sold, in the beginning, this is 1974. I was, first of all, I was there in 1973 when the Israeli Yom Kippur War broke out, and I was a volunteer. I come back in 74, and uh, I sold Encyclopedia Judaica. It's a 15 volume encyclopedia that was just published in, in a very fancy hotel in uh, Israel. And behind me were the books, and the, the best people came into that hotel. Menachem Begin, former prime minister, came into the hotel. Of course, I said, Mr. Prime Minister, sit down. Let's talk. He was not yet prime minister at that time. But Prime Minister Golda Meir came. And she, wa she was still the Prime Minister. She says, Golda, sit down, let's talk. Later on in 1976, when I went back to San Francisco, I was a security guard. And she told me of a story that very few of you know about, which I have to share with you. In 1955, Charles de Gaulle came on a state visit to Israel. It was a very big thing. The state was already seven years, only seven years old. And the girl, the girl arrives with his uniform, with his little hat. And they take him around Israel for two, three days. And at the end of the trip, he's ready to go home to the airport. And he already became very good friends with the David Ben-Gurion, the prime minister. He says, David, you know you are, you know, I'm a soldier. You are a soldier too. You're a Jewish soldier, I'm a Christian Parisian soldier. But I don't want to leave here, your beautiful country, until you show me the tomb of the unknown soldier. David Ben-Gurion looks at Moshe Dayan, looks at Gold and says, what does this putz want from me? We don't, we, don't have, we don't have any unknown soldiers. Just take him to the cemetery, point something, we'll get him on the plane, we'll get him the hell out of here. So they go to a cemetery in Tel Aviv, and they take him to a gravesite, and David says, you know, Charles, this is the tomb of the unknown soldier, right here. Charles de Gaulle kneels down, crosses himself, says a prayer, and as he gets up with his long body, he looks at the tombstone, and it says, Itzhak Cohen, export-import businessman. Hey, David, you're bullshitting me here. What, what do you think you're doing? This is not the unknown soldier. This is Itzhak Cohen, export import businessman. It's right there. Charles, listen to me. Itzhak Cohen is very well known in the country as an export businessman, export import businessman. As a soldier, nobody knew him. <laughs> this is a secret from Golda Meir. And with this, Yerushalayim Shalzaha, Avirarim tsalul kayain, bereach oranim, 
לשוק ולכיכר, שופר קורא בהר הבית, בעיר העתיקה. ובמערות אשר בסלע, אלפי שמשות זורחות, נשוב נרד לים המלח בדרך יריחו. ירושלים של זהב ושל נחושת ושל אור, הלא לכל שירה היכני. ירושלים של זהב ושל נחושת ושל אור, הלא לכל שירייך אני כינור, כינור. Thank you. תודה.
צנה, 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 אבנות תורן החיילים במושבה. אל נא, אל נא, אל נא, אל נא, אל נא, תתיירנה מביתך, אל איש צבא. צנה, צנה, אבנות תורן החיילים במושבה. אל נא, אל נא, אל נא, תתיירנה מביתך, אל איש צבא. I'd like to thank Pamela Bingham Shepherd on the clarinet. Moshe Ben Basat, also known as Mutsi, singing, and Aya Ida. Aya Isaacs. Isaacs on the violin. And on the tape was accordion village Schumann and the bass Rich Latimer. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you for being here. I'd like to give it to Rabbi Lyon to say goodbye. I can never say goodbye. It's Stephen can't say goodbye, but I'll help. Stephen Geiger has been a wonderful addition to our community. You have brought what we call, as you know, Ruach, a real spirit. You have lifted us up today in the middle of a country where we all are concerned about many issues today. You have certainly given us many reasons to remember that there are points of light in our midst that remind us of menschlichkeit, the idea and attitude that we must be here for each other. President Bush and Mrs. Bush, it is beyond an honor to have you on my bima. In our congregation, where Rabbi Karf and Rabbi Scott, Rabbi Herman, Cantor Mudlu, and others have led in leadership, we want to wish for you that good health should continue to go with you today and for months and years to come. So as we say in my congregation, may God bless you and protect you. May God's countenance shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God grant you all that together as a nation, as congregations and churches wish for you. May it be life and strength, good health and peace. Amen.
friends, we are delighted that a reception awaits us in Wiltumham Hall, directly beyond the sanctuary behind us. We're grateful for your presence and grateful for all that we can continue to do together. This concludes our program. Thank you so much.